見て見て見えだよはーいハロー<笑>はいエミバレハロヘロヘロヘロヘロヘロヘロヘロヘロ How is you? Hi! I'm sorry I took so long. I didn't I didn't realize that the freaking Okay, my wavelength software just hates me, okay? <laughs> you met me! Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to catch you among the among the chat. <laughs> I give you some power. <laughs> Hi, you, mommy. Hi, Jai Fai. Hello, Minga. Hi, Kashiko. Hi, Ming. Hello, hello. Hi, Panda. Hi, Ayan. Hello, Shannon. Hi. Mite, mite, mie da yo. Hi, how you doing? Oh, guys, I had like a really freaking long day. I woke up at like 8 30 this morning. You know, I never wake up that early in the morning unless it's necessary, you know? Like, I love my sleep. To such a great extent, I would never, I would never wake up before <laughs> before ten voluntarily. But yesterday I had no choice. I like, I mean, today I'm sorry. Today I had no choice. Hold on, putting my headphones on. But yeah, uh, the cleaners came today this morning, so I I was awoken from my slumber quite early, and I was sad about it, but. It had to be done. <laughs> and um, I was just chilling this morning, you know, working on the slides. Well, not really slides. The, 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 I don't even know what to call this. The PDF file <laughs> for the stream today. Um, it's not going to be too long, but there is quite a lot of stuff. There's a lot of words. Um, so I did that. Had lunch. It was just instant noodles. Nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing healthy. Uh, <laughs> and then... I spent the entire afternoon just trying to finish up the lecture thing, the, the PDF file thing, because oh my god. I I looked back at all my notes about sleep physiology and I forgot how I hated the course so much because the way they did it wasn't like separated lecture slides. It was just three or four lectures, like the slides, I mean, like the, the PowerPoint was 70-something slides long. And I was like, okay, it's not broken up into little, you know, bits. And I just remembered, I'm like, oh yeah, this class was three hours long. No wonder it's not broken up into little sections. Like, you know, a lecture one to ten or something. You know, like, it wasn't like that. It was literally just three or four. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and then I looked through it. And I was like, holy fuck, why is 90% of this just graphs and then my handwriting just all over it? So it took me a really long time to gather the information that I wanted to gather and present to you today. Like, I just, I had a rough time. <laughs> and I even went back and played some recordings of the lecture because it's saved in my iPad anyway. Just to see if I got shit right. And I did. So, I mean, I'm glad. But at the same time, like... <laughs> Damn, it was a lot. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, that happened. And then... Um... I'm trying to think. What else did I do today? I... Went to my grandparents for dinner tonight, like always. Um... We had... Chicken. Yeah. Like, barbecue chicken. And some steak cut up into cubes with garlic and teriyaki fried rice. That was really interesting. My grandpa usually doesn't make Asian food, despite being very Chinese. Like, he doesn't make Asian food. He loves making Western food or just anything not Chinese food he loves. So, he um, made that today, which is really cool. Uh, and then... What else did I do after that? And then I came back with some mango pudding. Uh, and I tried to set up for stream as fast as I could. But the freaking OBS was screwing with me. That was not nice. <laughs> I don't don't know why OBS be doing this to me tonight. I was I was kind of angry, but it's okay. This is fine. This is fine. Um, I'm trying to remember how I went into like the presentation mode thing on my 
on my on my iPad because I mean I kind of need that, but I forgot forgot how to do that. How does one do that? Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. How do I do that? What do I click? How do I get there? Uh. How do I? How do I even get there? Huh? How? How? I need it. I need my presentation mode. OBS is never cooperative with me. These past two streams that I've done, actually, no, three. I think it's three. It just has not been good. Like, I don't know why, but it just. It won't... It won't listen to me. And... It... Is sad. Is... Is very sad. I don't know why. But... I pray that... You know, it'll... It'll be nice... One day. <laughs> <laughs> Will I ever do another Nahida Cosplay stream? I don't know. I've been thinking about it. Like... I think... It would be nice. But at the same time... Like... I don't know if I want to. Okay, let me disconnect some stuff. I'm gonna connect my iPad. Uh. Da -da -da. Aha! I found it. Okay, wait. I'm setting my iPad up. This is important. But I don't know. I don't know how often I would do those kind of streams because it was for a very special occasion that I did it. Um, I'll think about it though. I'll think about it. I can, I can... Put it to consideration, right? Like, it's not a complete no. But it's not a yes either. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to stall too much, so... Let me... Uh. Where is my BGM? No, come back. Come back! Why are you gone? Is it back now? <laughs> also, uh, let me share this with you guys, cause, um... I, I took so much time to, to make this, of course I need to share it. Uh, how do I share it? That's the better question. Is it this button? So, like, this one? Uh... Is it... Hold on. This one? Uh. Uh. Yeah. Okay, wait. I'm gonna make sure you guys have it. Um where's my <laughs> Okay, it's in there. Uh, I'm gonna rename it though, cause I don't. I'm, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> okay. Uh. Da -da -da -da. How do I share this? Freaking Google. Ah! I found it. <laughs> okay, can wait. Um. Okay, so all the notes for any lecture stuff that I do like this are in here, so you can just click the sleep one. <gasps> okay. Eh. Oh. There. <laughs> I did it. I did the thing. Wee! I don't like red though. Eh. Blue? Wee! Okay. <laughs> I feel professional. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm missing... I'm missing the thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important, guys. Yo, did you feel the heat today? It was so hot. Like, I am sweaty. It was like 30-something degrees today. I was not... I was not happy. <laughs> I, was, I was so cranky. <laughs> I'm trying to find my glasses. Where the heck my glasses at? Ah, yes. Wait, do you guys like these glasses? Or, or, or these glasses. This one's a bit smaller, but... I'm 
look, he's cute. Oh, I like both. I like both. This one... Oh, crap. I did I have to do... Hold on, put that there. Ah. Stay. Does this look more professional? Ah. This one? Which, which, which one's prettier? The Sakura? Okay, 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 okay. I won't go for the nice professional looking one then. <laughs> eh. Here? Ha! Ah! No? Here? Why is it not straight? Homesters wasting their monies on me! Homes? Poor sleep, poor growth. What a coincidence. Med students get poor sleep. Petanko. Thank you for the donor. <laughs> I'll take the donor. Thank you. Uh, about there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be looking like this the entire time, so... I'm, I'm a perfectionist about the glasses placement, okay? It's, it's important. It's very important to me that this is in the right spot. Is it in the right spot? I don't think it is. I don't know, I'm gonna put it back on again. Hold on. Let me get it back. I look empty without it. Where are the glasses? Where are my glasses? Do do do. Ah, there we go. Test be the right way. Okay. <laughs> Can I make myself bigger now? Ah, yes. Feels feels professional. Ah. Wah. <laughs> Alright. I must teach you today about the thing that none of you get. Test be sleep. <laughs> Make the look at that size bar. It does, right? I feel smart. I feel smart. I feel very, very smart at the moment. This is a nice feeling. <laughs> taking the, yes, taking the notes. But I, I hope you guys got the PDF file. Let me know if you guys can access it. You should be able to. Um, like it should be the cardiology, cardiovascular physiology one, the neurology one, and then the third one should be the sleep one. You were able to get it, Brian? Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Whew. I hope all you could. Because if one person got it, then the, the rest of you should have too. <laughs> okay. This is time. Yeah, you got it? You got it? Okay, okay. Time to follow along. <laughs> I put a lot of words into this one because sleep cannot be explained very well with pictures, unfortunately. Like with the past ones, I was able to draw like a heart or an axon. Neuron, but with sleep, it's... You don't really have much of those opportunities to draw things, so... <laughs> and I also tried to include information that not all of you would have known, or like... Um, the very basics of sleep. I know most of you guys would probably know, like... You know, you sleep, you wake up, there might be some REM sleep, there's like non-REM sleep. Um, but I tried to include things that go a little bit further than that. Um, like the transition between the two. Uh, like non-REM and REM sleep, or how you wake up, um, and some of the neurotransmitters that are involved. Uh, what else did I include in there? Obviously, there's like some health stuff, but um, to a bit greater of an extent, because most of you probably know that not getting good sleep equals bad health. But in what way? Like, I don't think many of you would know the specifics, so I tried to include that. Um, and the whole circadian rhythm thing... It's a word that gets passed around a lot, but no one actually knows what it is. <laughs> Besides, you sleep at a certain time and then you wake up at another time. <laughs> like, I don't think people actually know specifically what the circadian rhythm is. So I added that. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll try... I'll try to explain it. Um, 
And I love endocrinology. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but... It do be hormones. I like studying the hormones and the flow charts and how they all affect one another. So I had to include some. <laughs> internal clocks? Kinda. Kinda. Yeah, kinda. I wouldn't say it's completely internal though. Big words. Yeah, big words. I'm gonna teach you how to big brain. <laughs> okay. So. We have... What is sleep? Because you know what? People think sleep is just rest. But it's not really just rest. There's more to it than that. Um, physiological... I can't say that word properly. Physiological differences between your wakefulness state, your REM state, and your non-REM state. If you don't know what the REM shit is, I will explain what that is later. Um, the sleep switch, be like that being how to go between sleeping time and waking time. And how it happens. And then the fourth bit is the part that's supposed to scare you into getting a bit more sleep in your life. So, uh, yeah. Okay, moving on. What is sleep? This is, this is a big thing. I know, I couldn't really fit it into the screen size. Hopefully you have the PDF up yourself to see it. Um, you hear the dog was barking, by the way? I don't know if you can. <laughs> Sleep is not a conspiracy. It is necessary. You know what? When I took this course about sleep, I originally was just like, nah, just because I learned about it does not mean I'm going to actually sleep more, right? No, I actually cared, like, a lot. During the semester when I took this course, I slept like a baby. If so, they wouldn't spend a quarter to their lives unit. Yep, you actually lose. Fun fact, you lose 27 years of your life just from sleeping. I don't know if you guys knew that, but now you do. <laughs> We spend 27 years sleeping. Obviously, that number varies depending on how much sleep you get. But, um... It do be... It do be effect. Sleep is not for the weak, it's actually for the strong. <laughs> it, you would be weaker without sleep. I'm actually gonna talk about that, because I put a psychological component in here. <laughs> so is that wasted? It's not wasted, it's necessary. So, I'm gonna get into the age thing later. That is part of the, the slides. The doobie. Not slides. PDF file? I don't really know. This is like not separated into actual slides. So, um, there's a couple of components to sleep. You have behavioral characteristics, but you also have physiological ones. There's like psychological stuff happening, like neural stuff happening. There's a lot. There, there's a lot to sleep. But I basically put this slide up first because I wanted you guys to have some kind of idea of the different types of sleep. Because in different animals, they sleep differently. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys would know um, some animals are nocturnal where they're more active at night. And some of them are more active during the day. Uh, but that's like very basic stuff. So, um, yeah, behavioral states we have is basically asleep and awake, right? And what it means by... Mutually exclusive. Why am I erasing this? This thing? Mutually exclusive means you are either one or the other. You cannot be both at the same time. Like, you are either awake or you are asleep. There's no such thing as being... Both asleep and awake at the same time. That does not exist. And the reason being is because of like a lot of inhibition with hormones and stuff. But... You just... You cannot be either or. At least in us, we cannot be either or. There are some animals that can be either or. Like dolphins. Where half their brain is asleep and they keep one eye open to, to sleep. That way they don't get attacked and they actually swim in circles. <laughs> so, um... There's also the change in the physiological condition. Meaning the hormones and temperature. Things like that. Uh... Now, the main thing that I wanted to point out here was... Was these three things. So... With cycles, we go by the circadian one. Which is... You know, you sleep during the, the night and you wake up during the day. So, the cycle, what they go by is the uh, the first bit of the word before the Adian bits. Like, all of this stuff is basically the time that you're awake. And this is how... It's like the time. Basically just means time. Um, Ultradian minutes to hours are animals that are awake for minutes to hours. So, like insects, they are awake for minutes to hours. For us, as humans, we are awake during the day and asleep during the night. So that's circadian. It's a daily thing. Um, that actually falls under nocturnal and diurnal, where you are active 
at the night, but asleep during the day, or you're awake during the day and asleep during the night. Infradian means multiple days, meaning that you're awake for multiple days at a time, and you are asleep for multiple days at a time. And uh, Cirque Annual is seasonal stuff, so like, let's say bears, you know, like how they hibernate? That's like a seasonal thing. Yeah. Now, most of you know nocturnal, and I don't know if you guys know the other words, but diurnal is what we are, where we're active during the day. Um, crepuscular is for really funky animals that are awake at dusk, twilight, and dawn, which is such a, such a weird-ass time to be, like, active, but there are animals like that. <laughs> what if you work the night shift, then you're fucking up your circadian rhythm? E. Okay, so, um... Let's see what else. Did I have anything else to talk about that? I don't think I did. So, behavior characteristics. Now this one, I know it sounds really, really simple. But, um... Posture is not like, oh, you sleep like a shrimp or you sleep like you're a starfish. No, no, no. That's not what I'm alluding to. Posture meaning that you sleep in a specific location. Like for us, we sleep in beds sheltered by a house. Some animals will like have burrows, right? Like rabbits, they sleep in little holes in the ground. Some animals like fishies, they sleep in the water. And um, like if you've seen a horse sleep, they sleep standing up, right? Like different animals will have different sleeping postures. That's what it is. And you also have different changes in motor control. So, like moving during your sleep, you move a lot less in your sleep. Some animals, like... Typically aquatic animals, they keep swimming even while they are asleep. So, again, different postures of sleep. Now, rapidly reversible is something that's very unique to sleeping. When we're asleep, we can just suddenly wake up because, you know, someone scares us awake. People will dump water on your face to wake you up. Things like that. It's very rapidly reversible, right? And that's really important because it distinguishes sleep from things like being in a coma or paralysis and anesthesia. Because those are not rapidly reversible. But they are states in which we are, quote unquote, looking like we're sleeping, right? So, very, very big characteristic of sleep and just sleep. Um, the elevated arousal threshold. So, we don't get awoken as easily. Uh, like, like, you know when, when we're awake and we're daydreaming, right? Like, you just kind of zone out. Your arousal threshold is actually not very high, but it is lower than usual. Like, you, um, like, it's harder to get your attention. So that's already a state of elevated arousal threshold, like, getting someone's attention. It's even higher when you're sleeping. Like, you just, your surroundings are blocked off so much that you just, it takes a lot to get people to wake up sometimes. So different people will have an increased arousal threshold. Some people will have a lower arousal threshold. It's just how easy it is to wake you up, basically. And we have the circadian rhythm. So I feel like that's just something I'll explain later. Um, and homeostatic regulation is, well... It's basically if you have, like, uh, loss of sleep, you'll have... You'll be more sleepy, right? And you'll, that will lead into a, something called sleep debt. So, you know, like, your performance goes down, your reaction time is really slow. And after that, it's followed by a sleep rebound. So sleep rebounds is basically like when you sleep a lot longer or have a much deeper sleep the second you get the chance to sleep. Yeah. So three phases of homeostatic regulation in sleep. It's just loss of sleep. That leads to increased sleepiness, sleep debt, and then sleep rebound. Yeah. Very important phases for people who are degens like myself. <laughs> but okay. Those are those are the three things. Uh, moving on. Boop, 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 boop. This part's not as daunting, I think. But also very important terminology to know. Uh, the places in your body that have changes during sleep would be brain, like your cortex. Yeah, typically it's the midbrain actually, not like the brain brain, but it it's connected. <laughs> your muscle activity, like how much you can, how much you move at night, um, or how much you don't move at night. Cardio respiratory stuff, like your breathing slowing down. Um, your temperature, your temperature actually decreases while you're asleep, and your hormones just go whack when you're asleep. <laughs> Um, now the sleep stages, most of you would probably know this or recognize the terms. 
So REM sleep is known as rapid eye movement. Literally your eyes, like when you close them, they just dart everywhere. Uh, but it's a state in which you are dreaming. So every time you have a dream, it's typically here. Uh, and you'll understand the rest of the words later when I explain it. But um, it's very variable when you're like REM sleep is very variable. Your muscle movements and all of that are very rare, variable. I'll show you guys in a little bit of a graph later. Um, but this is like... It, the, the length of REM sleep varies as the night goes on. Because um, you sleep in 90 minute intervals. That's what people consider a full cycle of sleep. And it can range from... like At first when you fall asleep, your REM cycle is actually very short. And then as the night goes on, REM sleep actually increases in time and your non-REM sleep decreases in time. As you wake up, REM sleep cycle time decreases and then eventually you just wake up and you don't even go into REM sleep. Oh, Chris Guy, thank you for subscribing. But yeah, that's REM. Um, Non-REM sleep is kind of the more actually familiar thing. I think most of you can feel it's like... When you start to get tired, you feel like your eyelids are getting heavy. That's the first stage. Second stage is like... Your surroundings are blocked off, but you're not yet in deep sleep yet. Stage 3 is like your slow wave sleep. And then stage 4 is like the deepest, deepest sleep you could ever sleep. <laughs> but slow wave sleep... Yep, yeah, well... Also, we'll explain what that is later. But non-REM sleep takes up most of the time. Um, again... You'll see in a graph later what I mean. But, uh... It's like... It's the phase where you don't dream. And you just... Your body is very still. You don't move very much. Uh... If I had to put this in the cycle... I think I drew it out... Um... After this, but... Uh... You go from... The cycle goes awake... And then... Non-REM sleep... And then REM sleep, non-REM sleep, REM sleep, non-REM sleep, un until you wake up. So you go from non-REM sleep, and then just to awake. You skip the REM part. But yeah, that's how the cycle goes. Uh, yeah, okay. I think... What? Was there more? I guess there... Hmm. I think that was it. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So, how to measure sleep. Uh... This is pretty cool in my opinion. I don't know if you guys have ever seen anyone measure sleep before, but... I use myself as an example. <laughs> oh, hi, Eclipse! Okay, so when you measure sleep, we have three different ways of measuring it. Using an electroencephalogram. This is kind of put on your temple. Like, if you just feel the edge of your... Like, on the corner of your eye, and then you move up a little bit, you feel like there's a little bit of a dent. It's not completely like smooth. Uh, that is where the electrode will go. And it's... Oh god, ow. Uh, but that basically senses your brain activity. Like how, how much neural activities of like are firing and stuff. You know, like that's what... That's what that is. And then when you have this other one. The electrooculogram. I think it's kind of cool. The way that it's spelled. Because, um... Oculo... Means eye, right, right, and then encephalo is it means your cortex, and then myo means muscle. So I think it's pretty cool the way that they say it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's like your eye movement. So you know when I say you're in REM sleep, rapid eye movement. The more this goes, like the higher this is, like that means the more eye movement you have that's being detected. Um, so yeah. The uh, EOG is pretty cool. I like electrooculograms. But can you imagine? You have an electro just at the corner of your eye, basically. Like, it's it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sleep like that. Uh, the electromyogram is placed just underneath your chin. It's to sense your muscle activity. And that being, like, mostly your breathing. Because uh, when you breathe, like, it's through your airways, right? So that's where your airway typically is. Uh, unless it's deviated somehow, which is not good. Uh, but that's where the that's where the muscles tend to change a lot in activity when you breathe. And um, I mean, it it makes sense for it to be put there, you know. Yeah. Uh, it is impressive how big accurate they can get because they don't have the positive, negative, and a ground node. It's very very cool how much 
uh, technology has improved, but to be honest, the most accurate way will always be the... Well, not always, but in this case, it would be one of the most invasive ways. I'll talk about that after this. Um, so, if you look over here, there's the different phases of sleep in a graph, okay? I should probably orient you a bit. So, um... I'm trying to not block it, but I don't think I can. So, hold on. I got this. I got this. Hold on. I don't want to block your view. Okay. <laughs> so, between... I guess I don't want to write, but... Each section, like from here to here... That is about... I would say like 4 to 5 seconds. Like, this length here in duration... It's 4 seconds to 5 seconds. Like, it's not, it's not very long. I, I didn't have enough space to draw more. But <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the size, okay? That's, that's how long it should be. Uh, I, I have a feeling just drawing it out like this wouldn't have told you um, what it actually meant. <laughs> so, when you're awake, your brain is constantly active, which is why this is very condensed, right? Like, it's very like... Because it's always firing, right? And... When you're awake, your eyes are very variable in their movement. You know, you look left, right, up, down all the time. Um, which is why this is also very variable. It goes up and down a lot. Uh, electromyograms, well, again, when you're awake, it's when you're moving the most. You have the most control over your body, but it is realistically when you're moving a lot. Because it's like when you stand up, sit down, walk stairs, or just... Even when you roll over and stuff, like you are moving quite a bit. Like, your muscles are constantly active. Like, you move your hands when you talk if you do. Like, writing, eating. Which is why there's a lot of activity compared to the others, right? Like, you just go across like this. And you can see the difference. Like, it's... It's, it's a lot more than... You compare the peaks, right? It's a lot more than the others. Because when you're awake, you're moving the most, I think. Or, like, you're breathing the most. Or, like, if you're working out, right? Fastest breathing. So, this will make sense. Now, when you're in NREM sleep, that's like when you're trying to fall asleep, right? And it's the point in which you can either be in deep, deep, deep sleep or you're in like this about to sleep phase. Does that make sense? The drowsy phase. Yeah. These, this whole section here is like N... Stage like N2, N3. I don't think this is an N4 stage that I drew out. Um, but it's... At least you can tell this is the slow wave sleep kind of uh, area. Because you compare these waves, like the spaces in between, right? They're a lot wider than the others. This would be slow wave sleep. Um, main phase is actually three. Yeah, kind of, kind of. So, to break it down, your brain is like slowing down a lot. It's not as condensed together like this, right? It's just, it's very much like... Like it's more spaced out. And your eyes are not moving as much. So again, farther apart. It's kind of like the most still you are going to be when you're asleep. asleep. Yeah, your brain's shutting down, you're starting to just... Put, but you're not dreaming of anything, this is just... Stillness. <laughs> and your breathing is on on the way to slowing down, I'd say. It's it's being regulated. Um, but it's the, the, the movement that you have is just not as great. You're pretty still, but... You know, you can, you're still, you can still move around. Yeah, you can still move around, but um, your breathing is slowing. It's not completely slow, slow, but it's slowing down. Now for REM sleep, the biggest indicator that you're in REM sleep is the eye movement. Obviously with the oculogram, because it's called rapid eye movement for a reason. <laughs> so, it's gonna be the highest out of all of them. Uh, also the most variable. I've seen some... Uh, Waves that look like I'm gonna draw on the bottom here, but it's like like it's just it's so variable. Like it, your eyes just go everywhere. There'll be phases where it's a little bit less, and then it just goes like it, it's so weird. <laughs> but your eyes just yeah. And then with the myogram, right? Oh, thank you. Whoever is giving me reactions on their phones, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So 
you're not breathing very deeply. I, this is... Honestly, it looks like you're awake. Your brain activity when you're in REM sleep looks like it's awake. Not quite, but you're close. Like, it looks like you're awake because you're moving so much, but you're not actually awake. This is the phase where you're dreaming. So people with lucid dreams, fun fact, you're basically lucid dreaming in your REM sleep. Oh, hi, man! It is very important. Please sleep. <laughs> You never remember your dreams? There might be a reason for that. You like my glasses? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um... Let me think. Uh... Did I explain all of them? I think I did. You can ask about lucid dreaming? There's so many theories regarding lucid dreaming. You can train yourself to lucid dream. But, uh, hold on, let me... Move myself back now. That I've explained the graph. Hopefully I broke down the graph in a very simplistic way. I didn't want to go too overboard with uh, explaining what exactly happens. Because this these kind of graphs vary throughout your sleep cycle. Um, like, especially NREM sleep. It just... So much happens, man. <laughs> but, okay. Hopefully everything so far has been easy to, to understand. I think the rest of it might get a bit more complicated. Uh, but yes, you can actually train yourself to lucid dream. Lucid dreams, the way that we lucid dream is actually because REM sleep on a scale. So typically the way it looks like is... I'll have to write this with pen. It's just a different color. Uh, use gray. So you have being awake, right? And then you have your N1 all the way down to like N4. Right? N1 to 4. So if you don't remember what that is, it's, it's right here. It says up here. Um, so... The way it goes, right? I think I... Did I draw this actually? Hold on. I think I did. Uh... Right here. Yeah, if we go a bit lower. So... Where you have REM sleep is so close to being awake. Right? So... You can actually train yourself... To... Be a lucid dreamer. And... The reason why people say that they're conscious while they're lucid dreaming is because of this closeness between the two. If you prepare yourself to lucid dream, like writing down what it is you want to dream about, uh, like before you go to bed, you can actually write down a list of things that you want to dream about. Um, before you fall asleep, constantly think about those few things and do not deviate. Like you have to focus right before you sleep. Because once you do that, REM sleep is the phase where your body is integrating and processing all the information that happened throughout the day. So, like, it's solidifying your memory. This is the phase where neurons in your brain are making connections, which is why sleep is so important. And waking up in the middle of REM sleep is actually the worst. You will feel so tired. It is, like, you know that feeling when you wake up, you're so drowsy, like you cannot wake up and your eyes are still, like, closed? You know, but you have to wake up. You're basically disrupting your brain from making those connections and continuing on with solidifying your memory. That That's why it's so pain. It's one of the reasons why it's so painful. And if you wake up during REM sleep, you'll be like, shit, what was I dreaming about? That's mainly because you haven't finished solidifying that dream that you had and your memory's just not like, it's like, oh shit. I, I was dreaming, but I forgot what it was. That's what happens. So, people who lucid dream have a really strong connection with their consciousness. It's like what they want to dream about. Some people don't even realize that they can lucid dream. It's still like very tricky uh, for people to lucid dream, I think. But you have to... You just have to stay really focused. I personally haven't been a lucid dreamer at any point. I think maybe once, but I didn't realize it was a lucid dream. I thought it wasn't, but it was. I learned that later when I took this course <laughs> in uni. Uh, but everybody lucid dreams differently. The things that people lucid dream about are so different. So I know this one friend of mine, she was a very lucid dreamer. She was going through some really tough times in life and it was just so realistic to her that she was able to cut off a nightmare. But for some other people, they lucid dream in a way that's very unrealistic. Like, they love to dream of being on 
a UFO ship in the clouds and traveling to different planets, meeting random aliens, like, or being a fairy that's tiny like Thumbelina and living in a flower, things like that. I've no, I have known a friend that does do that, which is very, very cute. But it's one of the things that uh, make lucid dreamers so difficult to study is that it's so variable between individuals. Like, yes, you can measure what what stage you are dreaming at, but it's so difficult to be like, why do people lose a dream? Because it's... You, you'll see later. Dreams are very variable between people. And like, we can say REM sleep is when you dream, but being able to control it is an entirely different thing. I know that there are studies out there that say that um, a cor part of the cortex in the brain, I don't remember which one, but... Uh, it has a different neural pathway that gets activated in REM sleep that causes the consciousness to be aware of the dream that's happening, but again, not 100% sure that it's true, not 100% proven, gotta be tested. I haven't, like, done any research into dreams ever since this course, so I'm not sure. <laughs> that is the extent of my knowledge on lucid dreams. <laughs> Okay, okay, let me go back up. Where was I? Here. Okay. Yeah. You got any more questions? Some people wake up when they realize they're in a dream because they don't want to dream it. It's a very psychological thing. Like, that has barely anything to do with your physiology. It's very psychological. When you realize that, like, you're dreaming of something... Again, it happens in REM sleep, so it's not difficult. It, it's... It's easy to wake up from REM sleep, but it feels like shit. <laughs> I think that's the easiest way to put it. But, like, you can wake yourself up from a bad dream, and it's easy to wake up from a bad dream that you don't want to dream because it's so close. I do that sometimes. Yeah, I do the same thing, Brandon. I do it this I do the same thing. Mm. You also very prone to wake up. Yeah, because your consciousness is very at the front. Do your eyes move in the same direction? No, it's random. Very, very random. They're so variable. Like your eyes will really just go like it, there's no pattern to it. So the reason why I say that is because of the different uh feedback loops that happen in the different stages of sleep. I didn't expect to go into this, <laughs> but um, when you're awake, you have both feed forward and feedback loops. So you can command your body to do certain things. Like you're very much in control. Like when you write something, fine motor movements, gross motor movements, like running and stuff, right? You're very much in control, but you also have reflexes. Like I, I talked about this last stream with the neural stuff. Uh, like if you get hit in the knee, you know, it's a reflex to kick. Things like that. Or like when you touch something hot, it's a reflex to flinch away. That's uh, a feed forward and feedback loop that's active when you're awake. When you're in non-REM sleep, and REM sleep, it's an easy way to say it, it's mostly feedback loops. So um, your body senses something and it outputs something consistently in relation to it. So... Um, say like you're breathing, for example, your body realizes that it's in a state of rest. So the brain tells your lungs to slow down. You don't need to work so hard or same with the heart, right? Like you're not doing anything strenuous. Your body is not in the state of exercise. So your heart rate doesn't have to be so fast. Like your output does not have to be so fast and it can stay at a steady rhythm, especially because you're not moving very much, right? Like you're just lying there. So, you know, most of non-REM sleep is completely feedback loops so when you're in REM sleep it's mostly feed forward like it's always varying because the system kind of just does what it wants to do it's a reflex thing so your eyes don't have anything to react to it just goes <laughs> so like your heart and your lungs are, well I should say your heart it has its own pacemaker inside to make sure it goes at a certain rhythm but at the very least, your brain will tell it to go slower or faster at that rhythm that it wants to go at. For your lungs, though, it's a muscle, but it's very passive. 
it's not a very active muscle when you're asleep. The brain, like there's a cortex part of the brain that controls breathing. I'm pretty sure it's the pre bodzinger complex. Uh, you can look that up. I think it's literally just like pre and then bot with like the T thing. I think it's like that. pre bodzinger I don't know how to spell the rest of it. Like Z-I-N-G-E-R. I'm pretty sure it's that. But it regulates the breathing of your lungs even while you're asleep and when you're awake as well. Like I'm, You gotta look that one up. I didn't study that one for, for this particular issue. That's way too much detail. But um... Yeah, you can you can look that that one up if you're curious about it though. Yeah. So, uh, anything about the heart? Look up the cardiovascular stream I did. I'm not going through that again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, think. Think that's it for this bit. Measuring sleep though. Oh my god. Wait. So I didn't mention the invasive studies that people did to measure sleep. Oh god. So. This is actually still done. I hope it's not. Um, but I've been told that it's still done in certain animals, like in rats or something. Where they multiply very fast. Um, what they do is they put a node. Like, you know how we have the electrodes, right? Like, those are very much on the external side of our brains. It's a little sticky that just taps onto our head and then there's a like little wire that comes out of it, right? In certain studies, scientists have screwed a little hole within the rat's skull so that they can insert a node. And they will leave that node inside the rat's brain. So it's like, this be, you know, the head. And then there's like a little thing that just pokes out of it. <laughs> and there's a wire, that's, you know, so it's very invasive. But it gets the node into the specific part of the brain that it, they want, like scientists want to measure. Uh, Tis not good for rat, obviously. Uh, it's also fairly dangerous. Like if something happens to the node on the inside of the brain, it'd be very difficult to take out. You can't just rip it out. Because unlike humans with the little sticky, you can just... <laughs> it's gone. But... um. The poor rat has to get a... You know, it goes under anesthesia, gets a thing drilled in its brain, and it can't remove it by itself. Like, I can't imagine that it's comfortable, right? Tis not good for rats, but it was done for studies. And I don't like that it was done for studies, but it was done to study the sleep cycles. So, yeah. And there's actually been a study about uh, sleep deficit in rats based off of that... With that node thingy inside. So what they did... It was like a... Say this is... Okay, I'm gonna draw this out. Say say there was a little mousy. Boop. Okay. Tis mouse. <laughs> and there's this platform thingy on it. It stands on the platform. And there's a little roller thingy on the inside. So, it's a pretty big one. So it's not difficult to balance on. But... There was a study done where the rat was sleep deprived because it was focused on balancing on this little seesaw thing. And they the, the way that it was tested, right? It was like they let the rat sleep. And when it's awake, they put it on this mechanism. And while it's trying to rest, obviously it's like it gets tired and tired and tired. And then it starts to fall. Right? Like that kind of scares. <laughs> So it would keep trying to stay balanced, but over time, the doctors, like the scientists, would look at the rat and be like, hmm, it's getting sleepy. <laughs> and they would measure sleep deficit and stuff after that. Like they would take off the rat and be like, let's see how long this little rat sleeps afterwards. You know? So, tis, tis kind of bad for rat, but it is a study that was done. Um,. There was also one about a platform where it was like a tiny, tiny platform like this. And the rat was forced to stand on it. Like... Like this. So it couldn't really fall asleep. It was just forced to be on this little platform for hours and hours and hours. And then they studied its brain activity and shit. Yeah, those are just some studies that I know of that were done. Uh, and again, most of these are... The, the sleep studies are mostly conducted on rats because 
uh, they are not human. <laughs> and uh, apparently it was okay during a time period to be invasive and do that to a rat for studies. Uh, I hope that's not the case anymore, but... Um, it was it was something that was done to study sleep. I, I don't condone it, but it was something that was done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that's just that's just one way that people have measured sleep. Fun fact. <laughs> okay. Hold on, I'm gonna have a cookie. That that was a lot of information that I've given you. I hope everything's okay. Do, are are you guys understanding this? Like, like, am I going too fast or anything? Like, is this okay? My sister's boyfriend brought us twenty eight cookies from this really fancy place, and it's so good. I feel bribed. <laughs> Mm. That fact was not fun, no. No. And candy cookies? God, there's 24 flavors, man. Um, the one that I got was... Caramel and white chocolate. The other one's just white chocolate, I think. A sad fact, yeah. But... It was done for science. I don't know if they do it anymore. Hold on. Let me see if I can... Hold on. I was going through... My... Old... Um... Lecture slides and stuff to see if I could find it. Let me see if I can. Uh, I was looking at it earlier today. Um, you'll have no idea the amount of notes I had to look through just to make today's stream cut. <laughs> um, is it here? Also, I'm just gonna show you the amount that I dumbed down for you, okay? That's just how you wake up. <laughs> I dumped down a lot of it, okay? <laughs> okay, I think... Is it here? Hmm... Uh, did I pass it? I'm trying to find it. It was such a... Oh, this was a bug. Um... Ah! This is one of them. <laughs> I thought this was actually kind of funky, but also kind of sad. Uh, can I show you this one? Um, eh, eh. This is one that's just a picture. It's not... Uh, not too bad. Um... Mm. There! Yeah, yeah, so this is one of the experiments that was done on rats. <laughs> you should sleep science a bit less? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying chat's stupid. No, no, no. <laughs> this is one of them. There was this little single platform thing that I was talking about. Um. Yeah. Twas. Twas, uh. Oh, this is one of them. They just they just put the little rat in a wheel and it just ran and ran and ran. Uh, there was some done on bugs too. Um that I just thought were kinda gross. Um yeah. But I I did a lot of studying prior to the stream and oh my god, my brain. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Let me go back to the thing that we were talking about. Um, ah, okay. I think we can move on to the endocrine stuff. I love talking about this shit. It's it's one of the things that actually made me enjoy is taking this course. I think you can kind of guess, just based on this, what it means. Mm -hmm. Mm okay. Mm -hmm. Man, these are good cookies. Okay. What that, what that break? Okay, yeah. Endocrine responses! Okay, I am sure many of you have heard of melatonin. Melatonin! Not the game! <laughs> I did not mean the game. Melatonin is a hormone that induces sleepiness. No, it does not actually make you sleep. So that is why doctors do not prescribe melatonin for the long term. 
It is very bad to rely on it because us humans should produce enough melatonin to sleep naturally. That's healthy, normal human. Yeah. Like, you know, having insomnia is like people who do not release enough melatonin, basically. <laughs> they are all very capable of running. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna finish my cookie. <laughs> hey, I'd like to think you're all normal humans. I like to think everybody in my chat is at least a human. <laughs> I feel like lab rats were, well, a part a, a, there was a point in time where using lab rats was very, very common. And the reason why is because that is to prevent scientists from using humans right from the get go. Like humans just thought using animals instead that multiplied rapidly was more ethical than trying it on a human right away. But at the same time, animals are living beings. So, you know, it's all ethics and stuff. But what is done, is done. Hi, Therax. Konnichiwa. Hello, hello. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Thank you for being a member for two months. But yeah. Um, of course, I feel like nowadays, though, that a lot of the scientific studies that are done are not invasive anymore. Um, and if so, they are done with consent from humans. So, I don't know. But okay. Where was I? Endocrine shit. Okay. Melatonin. Melatonin. I don't know. People always think that melatonin is like some miracle to make you sleep. Right? But no. It actually does not make you sleep. I think that's a misconception people have. It knocks you out. Yes. Makes you go unconscious. But it does not let you sleep. It's... It makes you feel tired. It decreases wakefulness, basically, but it does not let you sleep sleep. It's not genuine sleep. Uh, you, you get not Being knocked out is very different from sleep. So sleeping is a very natural thing that happens, right? You fall asleep, and after a period of time, you will wake up. Melatonin will knock you out, make you unconscious, put you in like... Basically like between N3 and N4. And barely in REM. I don't think it actually even puts you there, but it just forces you down. And once melatonin has worn off, you wake up. Like, it it doesn't actually let you sleep. So, it is more active at night. Like, you can see, I put the little things at the bottom. But when you take melatonin, of course, you know, it will increase more. But generally, when it hits nighttime, your melatonin amounts should be increasing. And when you're about to wake up, it will go down because you do not want melatonin in your system while you are awake. Otherwise, you will be sleepy all day. It's not good. And for a lot of people, I think that when they take melatonin, they, for, they take it so that they can fall asleep. But realistically, it's not sleep sleep. Like, I... I don't feel like it's a great thing. It's never prescribed for long periods, but taking it in small amounts, just to like, if you're going through something, like you just cannot sleep, taking it in small amounts is not harmful to you. Why else would you be able to buy it off the counter? Like <laughs> it's not harmful to you necessarily, but obviously if you take it in large amounts, that is not good. This is a no, no, <laughs> but yeah, it will decrease how like it'll decrease your wakefulness. At least enough for you to fall asleep, okay? Now, cortisol is a steroid hormone. No, it's not. It, I know it sounds scary, but it's a steroid. But that it's a steroid. But it, it's not bad. <laughs> cortisol is just something that makes you feel like alive and awake and alert and keep you moving kind of hormone, okay? It's not like... You know, it's not the bad, bad hormone. <laughs> bad, bad steroid, steroids. No, no, no. Um, yes, it increases when you're stressed, but like... <laughs> ne necessary? Necessary to keep you awake, am I right? 
And the most dangerous for you Yes, they're very, very different. I feel like just saying steroid hormone makes people think, oh, it's bad, but no, it is not bad. It's just, it, it's a good steroid hormone. Okay, you need it in your body, otherwise you will not be awake. So, um, it will go down at night because obviously you sleep at night and then eventually as you slowly wake up, it will go up. That way you stay awake during the day. Now, growth hormone, this is important for the babies. <laughs> this is important for the tiny, tiny ones. Um, but it increases the most. It, it spikes. It doesn't even just gradually increase like these two, where it's like a little bit of a curve. No, no, no. It actually just goes straight up when you sleep at night. So, um, it slowly goes down. It doesn't just, you know, like straight down like the others, or like this one goes pretty much straight down. Um, this one is like, more of a natural curve downwards. I didn't have much space in between these two boxes to like draw much here, but it's it's a very gradual curve. Um, I am not a med student, but I did graduate from uni in something healthcare related, which is why I'm qualified. <laughs> I personally think that at least from all the schooling that i had uh once you take melatonin like it's can, it can only be in your system for so long right it'll it'll help you fall asleep but not like sleep sleep so everybody uh, again individuals experience taking doses of melatonin differently it will help you feel sleepy but again it will not make you go into a state of like non-rem sleep so yes maybe you'll, you'll be unconscious for a bit it's just complete like body and and four for a while but at some point maybe yeah when the melatonin wears off and your body is in that cycle of going into a like an nrem kind of sleep i'm pretty sure it is possible yeah that you can go into like rem sleep and then non rem sleep rem sleep, sleep but the problem is say you're on like melatonin right so let me find the graph where is it here so say say you take melatonin while you're awake right You'll probably be an N something for a while and then go back into the rhythm. But at that point, you only have a few cycles before you wake up. Which is why you're not actually sleeping properly. You're not going through multiple cycles of N REM sleep to REM sleep, N REM sleep to REM sleep. You're really just like prolonging this and then starting up the cycle. But that's why it kind of throws you off. Like it's just not... It, it, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, it happens, Peter. There's a lot of medications that actually interfere with it. If anything, my medication actually increases my melatonin. Like, just, just due to homeostasis. Did I not sleep well as a child? No, I actually slept very well. Actually, no, I take it back. I tried to sleep well, but um, for those of you who don't know this already, when I was a kid, I was very, very sick with very severe eczema that I had to take oral steroids from the ages 9 to 12. So that is a period in time where the growth hormone is actually at its highest. And the steroid hormones that I was on to cure me from all of that health shit uh, basically prevented me from growing, which is why I am 148 centimeters. And you know what? I should have been taller. Yes, genetically, I really should have been taller. But because of the steroids that I was on as a kid, I am the height that I am now. I have accepted it for what it is. I'm actually very happy to be short. I don't think I'd enjoy my life as a tall person. <laughs> I just don't know what it would be like. I don't I don't wanna know what it'd be like. <laughs> so I like I like being short. I like being tiny. Uh but yeah, that's um No, I'm not short because of genetics. Definitely not. My mom is actually quite tall. Um, she stopped growing at the age of 12 or 14 or so, but she's quite tall. She's the same height as my dad, and if she wears heels, she will be taller than him. <laughs> but yeah, my mom is actually very tall. Genetically, I could have been very tall. My predicted height as a kid was 165 centimeters, I think, which is, I think, taller than the average Asian female, at least when I was born. Um, that was what the... That's what the numbers were. Um, but because of the steroids, I basically 
had a very small growth spurt. So, yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna eat my cookie. Maximize that burn the money. How to get predicted hype? Oh, so I don't know how this is in different countries, but when I was born in Hong Kong, the size you are as a baby and the weight that you are or something, um, that apparently will um, give you a number. Like there's a chart for this somewhere. Uh, you can predict your height from when you're a baby depending on the size, like the height that you are when you're born and the weight. Again, just when I was born. <laughs> that is obviously not true now because of all the external factors that happened. Like, people who have had no medical issues throughout their entire life may have a very accurate predicted height when they're a baby. But I had so many problems, man. <laughs> that of course it would not have been accurate. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm gonna finish my cookie. Yeah, there's a growth curve. Mm -hmm. And it definitely depends on genetics. There's a lot of external factors like um, how much exercise you do growing up versus what you're born with. Like, are your parents tall? Your grandparents really tall, really short? Like, definitely matters. It's very hard to just predict, but like, according to the predicted height chart that the hospital gave us, I should have been 165 centimeters. <laughs> Smell her. Um, growth hormone stuff. Yeah, uh, this is why for babies it's important. Growth hormone spikes right when it hits nighttime, which is why babies sleep so early. You ever, like, not babies even, like kids. You know, some kids sleep at like 9, some sleep at 10. Most of them sleep at 9 from what I remember, but that's because it's when it hits nighttime and the growth hormone's at its highest. That's when babies will grow. <laughs> Okay, um, having growth hormone though, while you're, like, how do I put this? It doesn't necessarily make you sleepy or anything, but it spikes. <laughs> it just spikes when you sleep. It's one of those hormones that just spikes. Maybe it's an external factor that would have made you tall then. I don't know. Everyone, everyone's different. How much you sleep, how much physical activity you do, genetics, like there's so much things that influence you, how tall you can be. <sighs> but okay, uh, I'll try to keep that one short. This is, this is the complicated one. <laughs> this one's hard to explain. I, uh, I will do my best. <laughs> I also drew a little picture on the side. In case any of you wanted pictures of the brain, see where things were, because uh, there's a lot of words here that I don't know. It's just a lot. <laughs> nah, I'm not, I need some water first. It looks like a lot because last time I streamed, all of you were wondering about the fancy words and the fancy terms, and I was like, okay, fine. You want fancy ass terms? I'm gonna give you fancy ass terms. <laughs> so. <laughs> I gave you the fancy terminology. Don't complain at me now. <laughs> okay. You guys asked for it. So I'm gonna put it in. Now that I put it in, you cannot complain at me. I did what you asked. <laughs> okay. No complaining. No. <laughs> I listened to you, okay? I'm taking feedback from the last stream. <laughs> this shouldn't be too difficult. Honestly, you don't need the fancy terms. Um, but I think it's cool to know what happens between the different things that happen, you know, in your sleep. So, when you're awake, fancy part in the brain called the thalamus is activated. Yeah, you know where that is? Uh, it's, it's the middle part. <laughs> it's, this is a very dumbed down version of a brain, but it's, it's the middle. <laughs> it's the middle part. <laughs> And it's connected to the midbrain, which is which is this chunky part. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's the the thalamus basically has a ton of different what do you call it um neurotransmitters that go through it, like acetylcholine, if you guys know what that is, and cortisol. Like very, I'm trying to use familiar uh, words here, but um, yeah, those are it's like the gateway, right? So. 
Sensory input go to thalamus. Thalamus goes like, oh, tell brain that this is happening. And it, it's very active, right? It's like, it's, it's why when you're awake, the thalamus is one of the more uh, engaged parts of the brain. Uh, and then you go into NREM sleep, right? So at NREM sleep, there's this thing called the uh, VLPO, which is the ventral lateral preoptic cortex of the brain. And it's the part where it basically does a lot of inhibition. It'll release something called GABA. GABA, 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 GABA. <laughs> GABA, GABA, tis important. It's an inhibiting type neurotransmitter, so it stops you from waking up and it stops you from going into REM sleep. Yeah. Something cool called mutual inhibition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so GABA will stop REM from happening, but it will also stop NREM from happening, which is very interesting. <laughs> like, even I barely understand how that worked, but, um, you have, gallonin's not as important, but, uh, gallonin is basically the thing that makes your muscles stop moving. Like, yeah, that's why you're so still when you're in NREM sleep. Uh, yeah. Ventral lateral pre optic cortex. Do I have to spell this out? <laughs> 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 Okay, okay. <laughs> nah, nah. Not uh, uh, fancy words you don't actually need to know, but you asked for it, so I'm telling you what it is. <laughs> okay, so the ventral lateral preoptic cortex, BB. I don't know why they didn't. Like, I, I guess there's no C at the end, but I feel like there should have been like a C here. I don't know why they didn't, but. <laughs> yeah, the VLP. Parafacial zone is like. The like your chin area, which is why one of the nodes for the electromyography thing, the electromyogram, when you measure the stuff here is at your chin, is because that is this thing, like the the connecting part. It's in the medulla, which is right here, and the nerves that it detects are typically in that your your face, your face zone. Why is it pre-optic? Yes, it does have something to do with your eyes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, kind of. It it's like before it goes to your eyes. It's like the light sensing thing. Um, so it kind of does relate to your circadian rhythm a little bit. The pre... The, the <laughs> fancy VLPO thing. I don't want to say the entire word. <laughs> it's too long. Pre-optic area is like before your eyes see stuff but basically it's like it detects so, so the way your vision works in general is you sense light and darkness and then colors and then you know optic area stuff is like you connect what you see in the world and actually make sense of it so pre-optic stuff is like the whole contrast with light and in NREM sleep your body goes like hmm is dark have deep sleep and Eventually, the preoptic cortex will also be the, the VLPO thing. Will be like, hmm, it's daytime now. Can wake up. You know, it's it's part of that. It obviously is not the singular thing that tells you whether it's day and night to wake up in your circadian rhythm, but it's definitely a part of it. So it becomes active because it's detecting that it's nighttime, so you should sleep. <laughs> At least in this situation. So um, all these fancy areas up to. From here to here, that become active and uh, those areas will release something called GABA to inhibit you from waking up. Which is why you go from awake to NREM, to REM, to, REM, to NREM, then REM, then NREM, and then you wake up. Like, yeah. Because it stops inhibiting at a certain point. So, you go from NREM to REM. And when you go to REM sleep, the rostral pons, which is like... This is this entire fat chunk in the middle here is the pons, but it's like the front part of the pons. Yeah, yeah. Front front part. <laughs> Easy words to use. <laughs> so acetylcholine. Short form is ACH. Very, very simple, just write ACH. It um basically also releases GABA. <laughs> releases GABA, 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 GABA. 
and it stimulates something very interesting. It it also stimulates the thalamus, which is why when you look at this thing here, right? Your brain activity looks very similar. It may not be as condensed because you're not actually awake, but the the height of it all, like, it's actually very, very similar. It basically looks like you're awake, but you're not. So, um, fun fact right there. And you can, you know it's the brain because it's the encephalogram, the electroencephalogram. But yeah, it's very, very similar. You look like you're awake when you're actually not. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Andika. I am not a doctor or a med student, but I studied something very closely related to it. I have a minor in physiology. Yeah. Which is why uh, I can do shit like this and not lie. <laughs> I, I swear I have a degree in this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah. So, where was I? Where was I? Uh, I think that was just the cool fact. Yeah, but acetylcholine is actually a very common neurotransmitter within the brain. Uh, it kind of does... It, it's even involved in like motor movements too. So, yeah! Just interesting! Can't kind of doctor even... I am not a doctor. Oh my god, I never want to be a doctor. Too much work. Do not want to do the NCAT thing. No, no, no. No, thank you. I studied enough. I do not want to get tested again and again and again. No, thank you. <laughs> I've had enough of that. Mm -mm. No, thank you. I refuse. Nope. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do have a lot of this kind of information in my brain that has nowhere to go because of all the VTubing shit and games that I do. So I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll just share this information on stream and make this into content. <laughs> You got anything more to test? Well, yeah, so I don't know if most of you know this, but even after you finish like getting an undergrad degree, you have to do more testing to get certified to be a doctor. And you also have to have like residency stuff and it's just it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot a lot. So I was like, nah, don't thank you. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I got my undergrad degree and was like, this is it. At least for now. Maybe one day I'll get my master's. Maybe I'll apply this year for a master's, but I don't know what in. <laughs> I'm happy with my minor in physiology and my, my bachelor degree, but yeah. Okay. Um, that's basically what happens when um, you are in a sleep state. But uh, I tried to simplify it even more for people who didn't want to read all of that. So this is what you get. I drew this in like two minutes. <laughs> uh, I hope this is easy enough to understand. <laughs> but basically, the reason why like I didn't put like oh how you wake up and stuff is because I kind of drew it here, in the little corner. So um, if this isn't clear enough, I feel like I simplified this very very much. If this is not clear enough, you go awake, you go kind of drowsy, you go into light sleep, and then you go into a very low phase of slow wave sleep. Uh, did I write slow wave sleep there? I did. So, it's like, you're not deep sleep, but you're definitely asleep asleep. <laughs> it consumes so much time, man. Why am I so cute? I was born this way. I was born this way. <laughs> but, uh, I tried to draw this kind of accurately, but I... Not, not as accurate as I could have. Um, the time of NREM sleep actually increases over time. And then decreases when you wake up. Like, this is pretty short. It gets a bit longer. This is the longest phase. And then as you wake up, the cycle gets a bit shorter and shorter. So, yeah, that part's pretty cool. Um, and then even REM. I don't think I drew the REM part accurately, but... This part is actually really short. This should only be about 10 minutes at first. And then at the end of it, it it's about an hour. So from here, it's like 10 minutes. And then that this is for the REM part, by the way. Uh, I didn't draw that very accurately, but um, it will increase over time. Hi, Trouty! Hello! How you doing? Hi. Yeah, um... Ooh, I think I can move this up just a bit. Like, here. Because the end 4 bit. Yeah, okay. So, that's... Uh, the way that the cycle goes, each one is... Obviously, I didn't draw, like, 
multiple cycles. Um, but each one from here to here, I guess. Can I draw it like this? Ah! Like here to here? They last about 90 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes. It's very variable because of the cycles changing, but in the beginning, NREM is very short. And at the end, NREM is also very short. It's in the middle where it's the longest. REM sleep, however, does just keep increasing in time. At least that's what I was told, okay, in school. So, yeah. But, um, this part, I dumbed it down, made it very, very simple. At least I tried to make it very simple. But the cycle really should just go like this. Technically. It, it's hard. It, it'll go like this, and then back, and then this, and then back, and then just hoot. <laughs> so, I just tried to make it so you can understand what happens in between the two. So, you don't wake up when you're in REM sleep. Even though it's so close to being awake because of GABA being released and inhibiting you from waking up. Uh, and from NREM sleep, you don't go into being awake because GABA also inhibits shit. GABA does a lot of shit. It stops a lot of things from happening. <laughs> but at some point from NREM sleep, you actually will wake up and GABA stops inhibiting. This does not apply anymore and you will wake up. Yeah. Uh, but keep in mind, I guess this is one of the cool things. You look like your brain will look like it has brain waves that are awake because in REM sleep, your thalamus gets activated and it shows up in the electroencephalograms. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I like how I used myself as an example. <laughs> okay. What happens if you inject GABA into a person that is wide awake? Well, it uh, depends on how much, obviously, but um, I think if you inject it into the brain, uh, you'll... Uh, it depends on what phase. If you're awake during it, technically nothing should happen, except maybe your muscles will become more stiff. Again, depends on the dosage that you're giving, but your muscles will actually stiffen because uh, it's very much an inhibitor. It's a neurotransmitter inhibitor, so it stops uh, your neurons from firing. Your body will be more stiff, like, your, your muscles will actually be more stiff. Uh, information sending will be slower, like, you're not gonna be as... alert? I think that's the proper word. Yeah. But it, if you inject it in a phase of sleep, depends on which phase you're in, the one that you're in would last quite a bit longer, because you're inhibiting other things from happening. So, like, if you're in NREM sleep and you inject GABA, you're basically increasing the duration that NREM is. Yeah. Or if you're in REM sleep, you're increasing the duration that REM sleep is. The sleepwalking... I actually don't know. I never talked about like sleepwalking and stuff in detail. When I was in school, it was just not something I studied. I studied more internal stuff. Maybe that's why. But I've been told that sleepwalking is basically... Um, it's a different inhibitor. I don't think it's GABA. It might- I think it's a different one. I really don't remember. I didn't particularly study that. Uh, but I remember talking about it just a bit in... I just know it's another one. It's a not- not GABA. That's... Preventing the muscles from moving and stuff. Yeah. I forgot which one it was. It's not GABA. Which one would it be? Man. I'm gonna think about this for a while. <laughs> uh, eat my cookie. So, is that you suddenly get woken up? Yes. So, people who get confused when they wake up typically are waking up from REM sleep. Uh, REM sleep again is the place where, where is the time in your sleep where you're solidifying your memory, your like anything new that you've learned from studying or stuff, um, memories as in like what you've done throughout the day. Um, think just things like that. Um, new neurons, like if you learned a fun fact that day, like that's where it gets solidified. So, anyone who wakes up during REM sleep and maybe they're having a dream, typically you have dreams when you're in REM sleep. Some people don't, that's okay too. It's not a bad thing or anything. But when you're in REM sleep and you are dreaming and then you get woken up from the dream, you're like, shit, I was dreaming about. Wait, fuck, what was I dreaming about? Because you were woken up in the middle of your REM cycle and you didn't get to solidify that connection with your dream, so it's like, fuck. 
I forgot. <laughs> Sleepwalking hams and Enran? Typically, yes. But it's kind of... I've been told... Again, I didn't study this too deeply or anything. I've been told that it's in between N1 and REM sleep. Like, they are very close together. Uh, just in the phases, because... You go down, up, down, up, down, up, right? So... It's not completely like deep sleep or anything. Like, you are definitely asleep, but you're conscious enough to be moving around. Which is why it's very difficult to... Tell. Some people, like... Again, people are very individualistic when it comes to sleep patterns. People who sleepwalk, sometimes... They'll just, you know, walk around their room or they'll sit up in bed. Some people will go to a kitchen and make themselves a drink, like water, pour some water, make some coffee. Some people will go as far, very severely, and this is very bad, leave the house that they live in, right? So, again, different stages. Typically, people who have the more severe kind, they, that needs to be treated, right? But <laughs> I've been told that people who have the most severe case being like you go out and some people like even sit in their car. Um, that's typically N4. It's so deep that the person doesn't even remember it. So when they wake up, it's like, holy fuck, what did I just do? Right? And because you're in N4 for so long, the deepest sleep you can possibly sleep. And you don't have REM sleep very much. You're kind of just... Yeah. And you don't remember it. Most people don't remember sleepwalking because they don't have this REM part happening. Um, and then there's other people who experience it more lightly. Typically, it'll only be around this phase or so. Like, I would like to say around here-ish. Yeah. And again, they also don't remember it because they're not experiencing REM sleep. Yeah. But people will wake up in the middle of like their sleepwalking from this phase. Uh, which is totally normal because we actually wake up from... And REM sleep, okay? Like, we don't wake up from REM sleep unless it's by some other external factor. Which is not natural. <laughs> Naturally waking up is NREM. But, you know, some people get woken up by alarms or like other people waking them up. And it happens in REM sleep, man, you're gonna be cranky as fuck. <laughs> but it happens. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Circadian rhythm shit. We gotta move on. How much time have I... I'm talking for two hours, oh fuck. Circadian rhythm shit! No one actually understands circadian rhythms besides the fact that it's an internal clock. Which is kind of true, but that's not all that it is. So... What it means by predictive homeostasis is mostly the external factors of like... Being out in the day and then you go home and you sleep at night. It's kind of just the way that your body is able to realize that, okay, this is something I've done for my entire life. You. Wake up and you sleep, wake up and sleep at these specific intervals. That is very much internal, right? But the external environment of light and night also is involved with the circadian rhythm. Uh, it, what's, it's what helps with the predictive part of the homeostasis. Not just the force of habit of sleeping at similar times, but literally just the day, <laughs> the time of day and how many hours you have been awake. Which is why when people sleep at 4 a.m. and then they wake up at like noon, right? It's because you've been asleep for so many hours and you've been awake for how many hours after that. It's your body's way of telling you, okay, you've been awake for this amount of time. It is time to sleep now. And it'll hit you at 4 a.m. because you were awake so late the previous night. Like that's kind of why people can fuck up their circadian rhythm very, very easily. It's a very easy system to screw up. Which sucks. <laughs> but at the very least, like, this is a cool thing. Um, say you are locked in a room. This is never going to happen. But if you were locked in a room where there's no light. This is this was done in a human study, by the way. But if you're, you were in a room locked with like, no light, no natural sunlight. It's just, you know, your own light thing. Um, typically in studies, they keep it on because of, you know... Control variables and dependent, dependent variables, but um, to keep a controlled environment to make sure experiments don't go wrong or to make sure uh, environments are consistent, in these experiments, they keep the light on and humans in said locked rooms, they will just go about their day and stuff. In this experiment, 
it was proven that even without natural sunlight shining through windows and stuff, every person would still sleep at very specific intervals of day and night, even if they weren't like, you know, being exposed to it. So we have internal clocks for sure. It's the external environment that very much like tells us and shows us that it's there. Of course, in these experiments, the people who were involved, their hormones were a bit out of whack because of the lack of external factors. It was very much just internal rhythm. It's very hard to keep, but they knew somehow, even without like a clock in the room or anything and no sunlight, like they had to sleep at certain intervals. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. This thing. It's kind of how our entire body works. The circadian rhythm works. Kind of, uh, simplified, obviously, but we have oscillations within our body because we have these activators and repressors telling us it is time to wake up or it's time to go to bed. Moment in the was hours to sleep though. I don't know. I don't know. What about a bright environment 24 seven? That was the case in these studies. It'd be like, you know, the lights are on the entire time. Our body would still be able to tell because it's been awake for a certain number of hours. It's like, okay, I've been awake for this long. I should be in bed by now. So, time to sleep. How can that fix your sleep schedule? Well, self-discipline. <laughs> Actually pay attention to the clock and not go too far. <laughs> you know, that's typically how people do it. Like at this hour for me, it's almost 11. I... Realistically, should be preparing for bed, but no. <laughs> My personal clock, it start. It I sleep around two thirty or so when I wake up at ten thirty. So I get eight hours of sleep regardless, and I wake up in the morning. Like I sleep at night, wake up in the morning. It is still an okay clock. It is still decent, not degen hours, but again, most people. They sleep at around 10, 11, and then wake up at, say, like, 8 or 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning. Like, that's the supposed appropriate timing. Oh, you want cookie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason why it's so difficult to just, like, to get over jet lag, for example, it's because your body is so used to that other time zone and it's not used to the day and light. Like your homeostasis is being thrown off so bad when you're trying to get over jet lag. So trying to go to sleep six hours earlier or like eight hours earlier than what you're used to is very, very difficult. Totally understandable. But in that case, like you're supposed to stay awake until it's an appropriate time to fall asleep. So that you get over it. Um, and the reason why is because of sleep uh, deficit or sleep debt. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also part of the rhythm thing. So when, you, when you've been awake for, let's say, you are you staying awake up until 2 a.m. or so. You want to start sleeping at 12, right? If you stay awake and only stay awake up until eight hours before you need to wake up. So you, know, you stay awake up until like midnight and you want to wake up at eight. Like as long as you get eight hours, regardless, you slowly push back the number. Like you sleep from, say you sleep at 2 a.m. and you wake up at 10, but you want to start waking up at like 8 a.m. You just slowly take it back towards midnight that you fall asleep. And it should be possible because your hormones are internally, they're like, you're still going with the whole cortisol stuff, it's just slower. You can try and just like lie down and be like, hmm, sleep, come. But it doesn't work for everybody. Hey, very, uh, well, everyone's circadian rhythm is kind of different. Like, some people like to get seven hours of sleep, some people like to get nine, some people like to get six. The average amount should be. For at least people, it depends on how old you are. Babies will obviously get like shit to more hours. But as a teenager and as a young adult, you're supposed to get like six to nine hours. As you get older, like elderly people who are in their 70s or so, you actually get, you get maybe like 
I think it was five to seven hours from what I remember. Yeah, but you gradually sleep less and less when you get older. And it's recommended to not sleep as much too. Cause older people, there's multiple factors, um, neural networks and stuff, but physically too, if you are as an elderly person, if you are so stationary for long periods of time, it, you know, you kind of ache a little more. So it's not recommended you stay in bed for too many hours. Me. Wait, healthy part, but also kind of the scary part. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is what happens when you don't sleep properly. <laughs> is why old people tend to go to bed super early? Kinda. They have, like, most elderly people will sleep pretty early and wake up really early because of, like, the homeostasis thing. Their body is just more in tune with it at that point. This one is... <laughs> Man, uh, get more than six hours then. <laughs> Darkness 24-7? Same thing. You will... You'll also have that same clock. Yeah. Maybe you might sleep more, but... You will still wake up. There's only so much you can sleep, which is obviously not healthy. But okay. This is what happens with, with, with sleeping. Um, all the correlations to health issues and sleep that have been discovered over the past 10 years or so. I think some of these studies that this information is pulled from actually goes back to like the 1990s as well, which is pretty old data. Um, I would like to have more recent data, but uh, trends are kind of obvious with the way that they're going. So um, all of this is still relevant. Uh, you will have <laughs> an increased chance of dying at an earlier age if you sleep too much or too little like three to four hours per night and the, or you have nine to ten hours per night you actually have an increased risk of mortality rates which is not good um i get eight hours of sleep per night so i'm in the clear <laughs> but some people <laughs> uh have less than four hours of sleep which is not good which is not good um, and as, as the trends say, we as a human society are slowly getting more sleep, like because of the, well, this is what I meant with people saying sleep is for the weak. It really isn't. This is bad. Uh, it is associated with the sense of pride of being a hard worker and not sleeping because you're studying or you're working on something or, you know, you just don't sleep because I don't need it. You know, it's it's a sense of pride. This is not good. This is very bad. Getting nine hours of sleep when you're very tired and exhausted. That, I would say, is okay. And the reason why is because of sleep rebound. Like, when you've been awake for so long and you're getting very, very tired. Um, that's sleep debt. And you have to make up for it with a sleep rebound, which is an increased amount of time being asleep. And eventually, after that, you should get back to your regular rhythm of sleeping between six to eight hours. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you... Most people nowadays are getting less than six hours per night. And the other issue is people like to overestimate the amount that they've slept. It's, again, a psychological factor. They will either... To be honest, they do either or. It's over-exaggerate how much they've slept or underestimate how much that they've slept. So maybe you say, oh yeah, I get six hours every night. You actually might only get five. And the reason why I say that is not only because of like the psychological stuff, like, you know, but um, people will, you know, use their phones before going to bed. They might roll around and stuff. Some people might wake up in the middle of the night. So again, variable. Um... It's not good. Uh, realistically, I don't rely on health apps to track my sleeping. I just... I, I sleep and I wake up and I just add an hour. Because <laughs> that's typically what I, I would do. Sleep, sleep tracker. Yeah, I don't... I don't like looking at my sleep tracker. <laughs> I don't like looking at it. I don't think it's that accurate. To be honest. It's getting more accurate, don't get me wrong. But I don't think it's the most accurate. <laughs> it's great for people who have sleep apnea though. Like, this is not good. 
snoring and all of that. That's not good. Um, but yeah, it's... People don't sleep as much because of pride. Like... I don't like the, fa the, the phrase that sleep is for the weak. I'm really against it. Uh, I actually think sleep is for people who actually want to do well in life. Like, you know, if you want to study well, you want to remember th the shit that you've studied or... Like, working hard and stuff, yes, but you also need to rest. It's, you can't work while you're not resting, so... Um, I, I really don't like saying that sleep is for the week. It's, it, it always makes me feel very sad when people say that. Uh, like, I know people are saying it out of pride. It's like, yeah, I'm a hard worker, but I'm like, no. No, you can work hard and still get sleep. <laughs> just be more productive throughout the day, if anything. Like, it just... It makes me feel so sad, okay? Uh, but yeah. Um... Man, this part makes me sad, too. If you have less than six hours of sleep, you're at a higher risk of getting diabetes, hypertension, and high blood pressure, which is obviously not good. There are... I'll go more into detail with that. Uh, but yeah, it's just, just not sad. It's just, just not good. So when you're depriving yourself of sleep, these are some things that will happen in your body. And it scares me. I, 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 don't, I don't like what I what I've had to study for this, but... Uh, I couldn't make this look any better because it's really just a list of things that happen if you don't have enough sleep. Uh, but e. Not the people are drinking when they sleep is for the week. I hope so too. I it just I've never condoned it. Like I know I will stay up late studying sometimes or um, like working on things, but I will get eight hours of sleep regardless. I just I value it to a very high degree. <laughs> I've heard the expression that you'll sleep when you're... I've heard it too. And I hate that people say that. I really, really do. Just go productive and sleep. Yeah. I know it's hard for some people to do that. Depending on the kind of jobs that you have. Or like what it is you're doing in school. I get that it can be difficult. But I've always been really good at time management. Especially in school. Um, like even while trying to get my degree. I never pulled an all-nighter. I would always do things in advance so that I was never late and I could actually sleep the night before my exams. So, yeah, I've, I've never pulled an all-nighter. Yeah, there were some nights I got less than six hours of sleep, but on average, I would get over six hours. So, like, I, I was good. <laughs> it's very possible to have a good schedule if you're productive enough. Mm, drunken sleep is unrestful, yeah, because you're not actually sleeping. Oh, do you hear the doggles? Not sleeping enough is for... Mm -hmm. It's true though. It's true, my love. It wrecks me too. Like, I've tried. I couldn't do it successfully. I've never been able to pull an all-nighter. So, there's like some tests that were done. Um... Kind of a part of this list. So, if you don't sleep enough... Of course, all cause mortality that is <laughs> increased risk of death. Yes. Uh, metabolic syndromes being like... You cannot digest fats properly, which is why people who... Uh, don't sleep proper hours actually have the tendency to retain fat. Yeah, you don't... Uh, metabolize enough or... The opposite, where you metabolize too much because you're awake for too many hours, your body is just burning through its fuels. So, uh, just not good either. Uh, neurobehavioral performance deficits, uh, that kind of relates to the stuff down at the bottom, like here. So if you don't like sleep enough, your reaction time slows down and this compensatory effort thing, compensate, I can never pronounce this word right. Compensatory? Compensation of efforts, that thing. False responses being like, um, you think someone's trying to wake you up but they're not and you'll just suddenly jolt you're like oh shit no and you try to make up for things or yeah this was actually shown more in a study where people were deprived like before they were deprived of sleep there were two groups okay one that got ample amounts of sleep the other one that didn't and uh before they were about to sleep they did a test of just like clicking dots i very specific intervals or like say a dot was coming down they had to press at a certain time 
What people did when they couldn't get enough sleep was they clicked too early because they assumed something was happening. Like it just neural behavioral performance deficit. They just were not able to perform to the same extent that they did when they were awake. So that happens. This is not good. Um, but when it says proportional to the rate of accumulation of sleep debt means the more that you don't get to sleep, the more this pops up where you're slower to react or you have false responses like you make mistakes more often. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I find, I, I, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that. Um, the other thing here is this stuff. So the inability to regulate glucose and the appetite shit with ghrelin and leptin. Oh, I don't think I wrote leptin here. Uh, but regulating glucose and the whole appetite thing is in relation to diabetes. So you have an increased rate of getting diabetes. Um, your appetite will increase with ghrelin, but because you have, in relation to this, a decreased amount of leptin. Leptin is this thing. Leptin is also a hormone that's related to eating your stomach. So it decreases your... How do you, how do you, how do you pronounce this? Um, satiety? I think that's how I would say it. But it basically means that you will never feel full. Like the amount that you will feel full just decreases. So you're never full and you just want to keep eating. Oh, Akas, welcome to the music. Thank you for joining the membership. Yeah, it's not great. It's really not. But uh, it happens. It happens. And it's not great. It is not nice. Um, the increased blood pressure thing. So it's a feedback loop the way that this happens because when you're depriving yourself of sleep, you are awake constantly, right? Your body is working overtime. It's not had a chance to slow down, let the heart rest, your like, breathing calm down even. Like you just don't, you're not letting your body take the rest that it needs. So your body works overtime, meaning that you're pumping more blood to try and keep yourself awake, keep oxygen flowing so you don't pass out. Uh, which is why your blood pressure increases. And that will also increase your chance of hypertension. Hypertension is obviously increased blood pressure. And your heart will also begin to just pump faster and faster. Which is not good. It's not okay. Yeah. Uh, but the cognitive function decrease, meaning like you can't remember things very well. Um, your hands will get a bit more shaky. Uh, like you can't control fine movements very well. Like, say you're in an exam, you're trying to write something really fast, like, you just cannot do it. Um, some people also say that you get, like, black spots in your vision. That is obviously not a good sign. Um, what else? I don't know, there's just... <laughs> it's, it's a lot of bad things when you deprive yourself of sleep, okay? <laughs> oh, hi, Cozy! I heard about the bad No! Cozy, Cozy. Okay, good. You're joking. Nice, nice. Don't, don't, don't stay up until four a.m. Just say no, 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 no. Um, but yeah. How? What else happened? Start having hallucinations. <laughs> That's a myth. Sometimes. Faster heart rate than you use for valuable duties. Yep. It's it's really not. It's not good. It's not good at all. You sleep, sleep. Okay, if you sleep eight hours, I'll, I'll let you have that. I won't be angry. I will not be angry at that. Yep, it happens when your vision cuts out because your brain is shutting down parts that it thinks it doesn't need. So there are a couple of theories as to why all of this shit happens, though. Because you wouldn't think like, oh, yeah, I'm just sleepy. You know, like you just sleep, you rest, you get back to doing shit. It shouldn't have this big of an effect on the problems that you might have in the future. But the reason why that you might is because of a bunch of theories that people have had. Um, disrupting the rhythm, as in your circadian rhythm, um, not having it be consistent, it tips your body off balance. And so, like, you know, you're not getting the, the through your sleep cycles, basically. It's the internal rhythm. I mean, like NREM and REM sleep. You're not going through those 90 hour to 120 minute. I mean, 90 minute to 120 minute cycles. Um, so that's might be one. And that's what causes a lot of the neural deficits that you might have. 
the homeostatic imbalance is like the increased blood pressure stuff. Um, when that stuff is imbalanced for so long or for an increased period of time, it starts to have a long-term onset on the body. So that's when you start getting diagnosed with things like diabetes uh, and the hypertension thing. So when you throw it off balance, yes, it might be okay to do it like once or twice. You can recover from that pretty easily. But over the long term, when you put your body under so much stress like that, and you're not letting it rest, then this shit happens. <laughs> and last one is the external shit, external factors. Like maybe you travel a lot, a lot of jet lag, like to the point where you just don't have a stable sleep schedule. Um, or people are waking you up all the time and times you don't want to be awake. Maybe you keep waking up during your REM sleep, so your memory is just like... Huh. But again, these are effects that have to happen consistently over a long period of time. Because waking up from REM sleep just once or twice will not cut you off from your memory. It's not like you're going to forget everything. No, no, no. It has to happen. Like, a lot. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, years and years and years of just not being able to sleep properly. That's when this external factor thing would apply. Yeah. Yeah, I like taking naps. But every time I take a nap, I always make sure it's at least an hour. Okay. But you know what? Sleep is so important in life that... It's kind of scary how important it is because people will pass out in the middle of nowhere just to sleep. Like, people might think, oh yeah, you faint because, you know, you're not getting enough sleep. That's because your body is telling you, like, you are, you are so close to just not having enough fuel to survive. So, like, all vertebrates need sleep. And the amount that, like, the drive that we need to sleep is so risky. Like... You could, you know, maybe you're trying to survive, you're in the middle of nowhere, maybe you got, I don't know, accident or something, but you're in the middle of nowhere and all alone. No matter what, you will still feel the need to sleep. You cannot just keep going for days and days and days without sleep. It's just the opportunity cost. It suggests that it's so important in life that it would be pretty lethal if you didn't sleep. But at the same time, right, like... If you're depriving yourself and you just fall asleep in the middle of nowhere, that's kind of... That, that, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so, sleep is very integral to our beings. And it sucks that we lose 20-ish, 27-ish years to sleep. But I can understand why it's important. I don't want to have all of this. No, thank you. I don't want that. No. No, 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 no. You take naps a lot of person are not watching streams. Yeah, which is totally fine. Like naps aren't bad for you or anything. Like, I I wouldn't say do it often because it might screw up your rhythm. But it is good for people who deprive themselves of sleep a lot. If you can just catch like an extra 10, 15 minutes, like power nap it. At the very least, you'll be able to get to like maybe N2. That's at least a little bit before you hit slow wave sleep, so you're not in a deep sleep, but it will give you some rest. Some form of rest at the very least, which is better than nothing, honestly. Like, if you can sleep, like, do it. Um, but if you can keep the cycle, I would say keep the cycle. <laughs> I like this slide the most. This one's the nicest one. Um, eat my cookie. Bedtime No. I don't revenge bedtime procrastinate. I really, really don't. I like how this one doesn't have a lot of words on it. Like, you compare it to all the others. I just... I know this particular stream would have had a lot of words. And I hate that it did. But there's really no other way to explain it. Here, I'll show you some of the cool stuff I, I learned in uni. I think that might interest you guys. Um, Try this one. So I showed you guys my uni notes, which was very intimidating. Um, mm, <laughs> this is maybe one of the more simple ones. Mm. Here, this one. This one's pretty cool. 
we compare me humans versus rat human versus rat so this dark bit is like nighttime i think yeah this white bit is daytime or like when it's active and stuff yeah so during the day it's sleepy during the night it's very active. You can tell because the bars of black are very, very thick. Yeah. This is kind of cool. At least in my opinion. I don't know if you guys find that kind of cool. <laughs> but I think it's pretty cool. Oh, oh, you want to see how a uh, dolphin sleeps? Let me see if I can find it. Um. um, a num, a num, a num. I don't know if I can find it. Do I have the dolphin one? Dolphin! Dolphin has this like really weird uh, sleep thing. Um... Uh, -do -do -do. Unihemispheric slow wave sleep. Yep, yeah, that's this one. Okay. Uh, here we go. So, one side of the brain... This blue side... <laughs> is all like these. This red side is all like these. So it closes one brain and... Activates the other. <laughs> so, um... Unihemispheric slow wave sleep is literally just one hemisphere, as in one half of the brain goes into sleep, the other one is still active. So what happens is, let's say, um, this is the left brain, right? The left brain is active, and, um, let's see, wait, actually, let me read this. Yeah, this one's sleepy. This one's sleepy. This one awake. I was right. So... This side, when it's asleep, the right eye is open Because that's the way that our eyes cross over and stuff um, But this eye in the dolphin is open This one closed Like, the, the left eye is closed because the right brain is asleep And <laughs> so it spins around in circles That way it's able to see everything from one point of view <laughs> Which I think is kind of funny Um... Let's see... This is really complicated But this is how a seal will sleep I don't know how to explain this one exactly, but yeah, that's... That's something, alright? <laughs> that's... That, that is something <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can find the other cool stuff that I thought was interesting Um... There were some really complicated slides that I really didn't want to include Especially... This wake generating system shit, like... There were a lot of fancy words, you can tell my handwriting is so friggin' small because... I had to fit... All of that information in there It just... I, I couldn't... And there's no way that I was gonna explain all of this to you guys within 3 hours So... <laughs> I was like, no, no, but that's waking up, and then, um... NREM stuff isn't as bad, I didn't have to write too much for this one, but still pretty bad. Um, and... I think... There. Yeah. Yeah, this is REM sleep. Which is also not as bad as being awake, because there's not as much going on, but still pretty bad. <laughs> um... Was there anything else? Uh, I don't know if this will help you guys or not But basically... The pawns is... Do you remember the pawns thing? So this is like your brainstem The chunky brainstem bit And then the rest of your brain is like over here somewhere I don't know if that helps or not, but... Yeah <laughs> Let me see if there's any more stuff I can find um, I didn't go through some things because I figured that it'd be too much, but... If you wanted to see some of the graphs that I... Looked at for all the numbers and stuff that I simplified... Um... Let's see... There's... This... And this, and this, and this... This, and this, and this... This... Yeah, I... Yeah... Yeah... I, I went through a lot of studying for you guys, okay? <laughs> I... I... Yeah, I, I tried my best to not overcomplicate it. So... 
I, I only took the parts that I thought were really important for the stream. Um... Yeah. I don't know if you guys are scream, sque squeamish with bugs, but... Uh... I studied this thing of how they used bugs to test sleep cycles. <laughs> um... Yeah. And, and, uh... This is pretty sad. I learned about this too. Um... Fatal familial insomnia. Typically, people with this will only live up to the age of about 30-something, like in their mid-30s. Because at some point, they're just unable to sleep. And yeah, it's just kind of sad, but it's... It's in the DNAs. Uh, yeah, it's inherited, which is even sadder. So, um, yeah, not nice, but it'd be sad. This is all the details about it. I just... <laughs> it was not fun to learn about. Um, yeah. Might be able to see that a bit better, but... Eventually, your thalamus just... Goes... Bam. And... Cortex die. It's not nice. Yeah. It's not... It's not nice. There's some other stuff too. Thyroid hormones, body temperature. I tried not to talk about body temperature today because I didn't think it was that interesting. Literally just... You get colder when you sleep and you're hotter when you're awake. That's literally it. <laughs> um, So many graphs, man. I don't even know how I remembered all of this. This is... There's even more... Like... I... Uh, and this is in different animals too. Ew! I'm glad I didn't include math. <laughs> I did not include math in the in the lesson shit today. No, no math, no math. <laughs> no, wait, that's when do that there. <laughs> no math. We don't do math around here. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna stretch my legs. Wait, your pink tongue gets hotter when No, that's not necessarily true. I jammed your brain, you're welcome! Life times 5 is not 35. It is 25. 25. Man, I cannot imagine learning all of this all over again. Like, it's so much. It's so, so, so much. Ugh. <laughs> Never again. But yeah, that was all I had for you guys today, lesson wise. Yo, I I finished within two hours and a half. <gasps> nice. Nice, nice, nice. I didn't think I didn't think I'd be able to get through all of it. But I did. Which is cool. Yeah. Okay, wait, let me go back. Ha ha! Look at how cute I am. Oh, that was adorable. I'm adorable. So much education. You're welcome. I'm glad you got educated. I can, can I? I'm gonna take these away now. Oh, I, my face looks so empty without it. Oh, but it is what it is. <laughs> but I look so empty. My face looks so empty. I feel like the space between my eyes just got wider. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the stream, though. Was it informative? Was it what was it what you expected? I, I don't know what you guys were expecting when I decided to do a sleep stream because I think a lot of you were just being like, "Oh yeah, she's gonna tell us to sleep because of this and this and this." I'm like, no, no, that's not. I didn't want to tell you guys to sleep and why it's scary to not get enough sleep. I wanted to tell you guys your physiology and what happens when you do sleep. Like, I think people were thinking of the wrong thing when I said I wanted to um, do a sleep stream. But, hey, now that we did the sleep stream, I'm gonna keep my promise. The next one I do, as in next month when I do this physiology stream again, I'm gonna tell you what happens during the menstruation cycle. <laughs> and I am going to go ham on telling you guys why cramps are the worst thing in the world. <laughs> yep. 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 All the females in my chat, please rise up and be with me during that particular stream because I'm gonna need the backup. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
，你把这些 ，You're welcome, man, you're welcome. 嗯嗯，嗯嗯 ，Sympathy page 面 ，Me and my friends did a thing where we bought one of those period simulators and we put it on some of our guy friends back in uni. Oh my god, it was so funny. <laughs> Just me and my friends, okay. So, in my class, I had a couple of friends who we we had to take a personal health class in first or second year, and. One of those is learning about reproductive systems,、uh, just as any other health class would. And we <laughs> we had period simulators, <laughs> and、um, we put it on the like on the dudes first, and we we saw how high they could go up to, like in levels. And then, and this was performed in groups, like it was really funny, <laughs> and. We, so so I don't know if you guys know what they are, but、uh, the simulator is literally just an electrode, little sticky thing that you put in a very specific part of your tummy. It's like right below your belly. There's typically two or three.、Um, it just goes along your belly. Like if you if you chubby enough and you can like squish the little lower fat of your tummy, that's basically where it would go. It'll be like left and right side. Sometimes there's three for left, middle, and right side. Uh, and it'll just simulate what a period cramp feels like. Like it'll, it'll contract your muscles involuntarily, basically. <laughs> and、um, it's not really a shock. I wouldn't call it a shock, but it, it's similar enough that it does. Like it, the pain levels are very similar.、Um, and we tried it on the dudes first. I think they only made it to like on average about the fourth level or so, when an average period cramp is a level six. So me and my friends, we tried it after to be like all the females. We tried it after to be like,、hmm, does this feel like a period cramp? And、um, I got to a level eight or so when I was just like, oh fuck, now it hurts. <laughs> and all my guy friends were just looking at me like, how do you survive? I'm like, bruh. <laughs> I walk around in the mall and hang out with people when my cramps are at a level six, and they couldn't even get past level four. <laughs> Is it like that? No, 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 no. It's not. So、uh, the cramps feel different from that. It's not a. It doesn't feel like an active muscle you can contract. It's involuntary. It's like a very, in a way, I'd say you can compare it to a very bad stomach ache that hits you at. Two minute intervals, <laughs> and it lasts for like three minutes. Give you a break for about two minutes, and it hits again. Better than getting kicked in the balls? I wouldn't say so. And getting kicked in the balls is a one and done thing. You only get kicked in the balls like a few times in your life if you're that bad of a person. But you shouldn't have been getting kicked in the balls ever. But for females, we get hit in the gut by our own body every month for a week. Like. In comparison, I'd rather just get hit once in the balls and call it like a one and done. <laughs> I do not want to get kicked in the balls multiple times every single month on a very regular interval basis. Like that's not great, but like you know, <laughs> it lasts a whole damn week. Okay, it ain't great, and you only think about the physical pain. You're not thinking about all the other shit that happens in our brains with hormones and all of that. Like. Breakouts happen, mood swings happen, boobs start to hurt, your back starts to hurt. You get headaches all the time, so people get migraines. Some people actually have this issue where、um, they mistake their body mistakes the cramps for diarrhea, like you know, because it hurts in your stomach, so it's very close to that area. So constipation happens, and like some girls will really just like feel like they have a stomach ache twenty four seven. Some girls actually don't feel anything, but. You know they'll still get the the mood swings and stuff. It's very very variable. Like every woman experiences differently. Some people say that cramps happen because the uterus is placed in a very unfortunate position. Like even just by a few millimeters. Like that's why. But again, variable between human beings. Boob size also changes. Yeah, some people get like swelling.、Uh, I actually my feet will swell very easily. That's just a personal thing though.、Um, yeah. I call sick for me. We are unfortunately not allowed to do that. So <laughs> even when I'm cramping on my worst day, sometimes I'll still stream. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. Maybe it doesn't have to be the hardest kick ever, but you will have to get kicked to match it. <laughs> Mm, other parts? Of, yeah. Yeah, it's not just the booba. Some uh, some people get bloating, like their stomach bloats. It, uh, I know my, my family, like it kind of runs in our family where we have bloated stomachs. And sometimes I'll just, I'll wear a pair of pants. And I'm like, why? Why pants? Why? <laughs> why do you not want me to wear you pants? <laughs> but yeah, it happens. I don't... <laughs> hmm. Should I say this? I have been cranky for the past week now, and did any of you notice? No. <laughs> I have been preparing for my merch release, which is happening tomorrow this entire week. Did any of you notice that I was cranky and in pain and feels like I'm dying internally? No. <laughs> we just work through it. It, it happens. <laughs> Life moves on and we experience it next month again. <laughs> Just don't wear pants. I need to wear pants, otherwise the blood. <laughs> the blood. <laughs> cookie therapy? I love cookie therapy. I'll take the cookies. I want the cookies. I want cookies. I love cookies. I'll have more cookies. I was focused? On what? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I would totally do that. <laughs> I would do anything to not have cramps ever again, except for the obvious problems. Oh, thank you, Peter. Oh, is my OBS being shitty? Oh, I had a feeling it would. My my Wi-Fi has been kind of going iffy tonight, but OBS is just even worse today. You can tell anything was wrong? Yeah, because. We mask it, we hide it, or at least I try really hard to hide it. <laughs> Sometimes after stream, especially the first few days, I was just like, Okay, must act happy on stream, aha, aha, aha. Like, when I met, like, I was talking to Pam about this. <laughs> the first time I met Pam, or Bucket Pam, in person. That was one of the first things we talked about when we went to the washroom together. <laughs> I was like, Pam, I'm in pain. <laughs> and she was like, oh, it's okay. I hope you're okay. <laughs> we just talked about it. <laughs> we bonded over that. <laughs> Honestly, Peter, yeah. that's. I think that's what a lot of mothers feel. <laughs> or just older people feel when it's time. <laughs> oh, thank you, Chatty. <laughs> yeah, that's how I bonded with Pam. Like, I just... I was in pain. I was in so much pain. But... I mean, it's over now, so it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, next time I stream this kind of content, the uh, physiology shit... Um... I'll, I'll do the... I'll do the menstruation stuff. Yeah. Wow, isn't that exciting? <laughs> okay, um... Tomorrow... I should tell you about tomorrow, shouldn't I? Tomorrow's kind of a big day. Um... Hmm... How do I... How do I go about announcing this? Tomorrow... Is my two-year anniversary of being a streamer. Tomorrow is also my one-year anniversary of being... Uh... Minami Eko. So... I hope you guys will be there tomorrow. I am releasing merch. It is digital merch. So look forward to that. Um, I recorded some things. There's a lot of things. <laughs> I, um, it's, it's not like a big, 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 big merch release, like physical merch. It's all digital stuff. So it should be easily accessible to you guys, like delivery stuff. You don't have to pay for shipping, you know? <laughs> so. It is cheaper than the debut merch drop. So for those of you who couldn't afford that, well, now you have this digital stuff that you can get tomorrow. Um, it is a voice pack. Um, it will drop tomorrow when I start stream at 9pm EDT, where I start, you know, celebrating and everything. 
I'll talk about the merch stuff uh, tomorrow as well, like the process of getting everything together. But tomorrow, uh, you will get, well, at least the merch that's dropping. One of them is a voice pack, uh, my first time ever recording one, so be nice! <laughs> but there's a lot of things that I recorded, um, which is why my voice has been kind of shot these past couple of days and ca past couple of streams. It's just, <laughs> it doesn't want to cooperate, I'm not gonna lie. I low-key have a sore throat, and I'm kind of worried that Pam also gave me COVID, but it's just not hitting me as bad. So, uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I have a voice pack coming out. Alongside other things, too. Um, I won't release one thing with the digital merch. I have some free stuff coming, too. Um, for those of you who want to celebrate the two-year anniversary, but also don't have... The Moonies. So, uh, I have some other things that are available for you guys to use too. Even if you cannot afford the merch. But for those of you who are gonna get the voice pack, oh shit, you are gonna be so happy. <laughs> ay ay ay. <laughs> uh, I think a big hint for the voice pack stuff. Some of the lines are in the different languages that I speak, which is a very big treat, I think. Um, what else can I say? If you guys looked at the schedule for this week, you see the art that was, um, in there. Yeah, if you buy the, the digital release stuff tomorrow, you will get the full artwork thing of that particular, uh, illustration. And I will show it off tomorrow in full. For those of you who want to know about the the wallpaper that I'm releasing alongside the voice pack. Um, <laughs> I love it very, very much. And I am going to use it as my new profile picture the second that I can. But it's not out yet, so I can't use it. So <laughs> I love it very, 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 very much. And um, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. I don't want to spoil anything. So... Uh, Man, I love it so much though. <laughs> it looks so good. It's already my wallpaper for my... Like my desktop wallpaper for my vertical monitor. Oh god, it's so good. It's so good. And it's so big. I just... <gasps> okay, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you're excited for the voice pack. I... Okay. I don't want to spoil anymore. No, I'm not going to say anything. I, I was... Uh, uh, <laughs> tomorrow. I think at the very least I can say this. I will have like a little ending note. Oh! Jagni, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships! Oh my god, that's a lot of memberships. People usually gift like one or five. Holy crap. Thank you! Oh my god, that's a lot of people. Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you! I hope you had a nice day. You haven't been talking very much this stream. Hey! Say hi to me. Can't believe you would just gift without a word. Hiya! Let me thank you properly. Hmm? <laughs> you cannot share it, no. It is forbidden. But yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoy the voice packs. It's something I worked very, very hard on. Um, I spent hours within my closet just trying to record stuff. So, um, it is... It's a very precious voice pack. You'll get to hear a line or just... A thing that I don't normally do, so <laughs> uh, enjoy it. Yep, yep. Just, just enjoy it for what it is. Hey, Jagni. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> also, I received an update for my 3D model. It's not done done yet, but it's in the works, and I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, I shall not speak no more. I do not want to spoil anything. But um, I hope the lesson was informative. I don't think it like I didn't do it to scare you guys to sleep or anything. It was more just like I hope that you know you guys learned something. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Mm. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, good. Good. 
I would hope so. <laughs> if it's not, I'd be sad. <laughs> then what? Good. You're supposed to. Cannot believe the alerts are still going. Holy crap. Okay, whomst? Whomst can I raid? Um, let me check who's streaming right now. I think we should end the stream with the raid. Can I raid you? Where are you? Where are you? Are you still streaming? Why can't I read you? Thank you, Chatty. I hope you guys will all sleep well. Uh, please sleep so that you're prepared for tomorrow because big day tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. I'm actually really excited. I haven't prepared very much, but I really should. <laughs> I'll try and prepare more for tomorrow. Um, now that I'm done with all the recording stuff and, you know, preparing for this stream, which took some time, like, took a few hours to do, um, I can actually focus on trying to prepare for tomorrow now. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll prepare something for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know Moo is gonna help me out with some of the promo material, so, uh, it'll be easy to... Yeah, I will... Tomorrow, uh, if you're not sure about getting the voice pack or anything... Because some people are just like, why would I want a voice pack, right? Um, for those of you who will get the voice pack... Or are considering getting it... Um, I will show like snippets of it on stream. Very, very small snippets. But I will show a snippet of it on stream. Very small, because otherwise what's the point of having the voice pack as merch, right? So I'll show just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Give a quiz tomorrow. I can do that. Yeah. Are you gonna study? You gonna study about me? Hmm? Hmm? Y'all gonna study? I'll make sure it's things that I've said on stream before, but... Are you sure? You sure you want a quiz tomorrow? Do you think you'll get, like, 10 out of 10? I remember last time I asked 10 questions, so... Hmm. Maybe I will do a quiz tomorrow. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'll do the whole, like, poll thing. My times are lovely. Chari, I really hope you like them. <laughs> I tried to make sure that they were all, um... Not too edited or anything. I literally just cut off some sounds at the end when I, like, paused the recording. Everything else is raw. So... There's no, like, noise suppression EQ stuff. None of that. I kinda just went in and did it and was like, here. So... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough, <laughs> Can we get extra kind of saying we slept well? Yes. I'll give you a 0.5 for that. I will. That, cause that, that's important to me. Sleep is very importante. Yes. Sleep is good. Sleep is necessary. It is required. Okay? To be healthy, you must sleep. So please sleep. Uh, at least in... Uh, enough. Sleep enough, I think is what I was trying to say. At least six to eight hours, okay? I just... I hope that for all of you, you'll be healthy. I want you guys to be happy and healthy, so... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... I wanna raid somebody. I was talking about that. And I totally forgot. Oh, God. Who can I raid? Who can I raid? Um... Um... Uh... Can I raid? Can I raid? Who can I raid? Who can I raid? Uh... Are they doing anything? I wanna... The thing is, I don't know anybody who does similar content to this. So, we're gonna raid into something that's totally, like... Not related. Um... 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 I'm 
Why can I not click on... Do you guys want to raid a Japanese streamer? It's a singing stream. Hold on, let me double check. If I can raid. Uh... Uh... Their chat is very, very Japanese, but... I mean... They're very cute. <laughs> and I, I've been kind of into their stuff for a while, so... I think you'd like it. I think you'd like it. Um... But... Let me... Uh... I don't know if they'll understand English. I've actually never been... In their streams for very, very long, but... Hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, where's the crown? I'm looking for it. Yeah! What chat you typed in? Because I type slow. <laughs> Couldn't find my crown, damn it. Yeah, Mia Reda. Maybe that'll help. Um, again, if you wanna. Uh, you speak in English, you can, you can, but I don't know if she'll be able to understand. I don't know how good her English is, so... Um... But she's very, very cute! She's very, 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 very cute. Okay, but yeah, she's doing a karaoke stream. Um... Please be nice. Uh... 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 Try your best. Okay. I'm... I'm gonna go now. Okay. Bye, guys! Thank you for coming! I'll see you tomorrow for two-year anniversary, okay? Be there. Alright? Okay. Bye-bye! Bye-bye, Jackie. Thank you, Bye-bye! I hope you learned something today!